What's up guys, welcome to another video. It's your boy Ryan. I'm out here with Chris. We're on AJ's boat and we are doing some offshore fishing today. Started the day out catching some baits, caught some live uh, pilchards, some sardines, some greenies, kind of just a mixture. And we had a little surprise at the bait rock, so I won't ruin any of that. Let's get into the video. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Kobe is here, not barracudas. Oh yeah? <laughs> Give <laughs> the whole time. This drag is not set at all. Just take your time. Four sharks under them. Yeah. None are hot on they're, them right now. They're uh they're vegan sharks. <laughs> I can't believe that Kobe had jumped. I thought it was a kudo when I heard the splash. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> I got a kudo, He's like, hey dude, I got a fish on here. Hmm. You need a gas? Yep. Just careful, careful. Okay. Got that thing. Nope. Okay, let me ask. Go take the camera or one thing. In the boat. Hell yeah. Back box. So we literally were just moving around catching bait and we had a rod out with a pilchard on and Chris goes, huh, there's a fish on this rod. And we're like, oh, you got a blue runner, dude. Comes up, jumps. He's like, guys, I got a cobia. We're like, nah, it's a barracuda, dude. He's like, no, it's a cobia. And as soon as we look down, boom, cobia just right there and all mayhem broke loose. And apparently we don't know how to gaff fish, but somehow got it in the boat. So we just put the fish in the kill box real quick so they don't break anything on the boat. And then as soon as they die, we ice them down. I'm going to take couple quick picks for Christmas. This dude? Big Kobe a guy, huh? Yeah, turn it into you. <laughs> oh my god, flip out a pilchard. I think Bonita ate it. Swing around, dude. Get caught on it. The goal of today is to just kind of catch whatever really wants to eat out here. Um, snappers, cobias, kingfish. We got a flat line out with just a bait kind of on top just to see if anything wants to come up and eat that. And then we're dropping to the bottom some dead baits and some live baits. And we're see catching whatever really, really wants to eat. A couple red snapper, a couple mangroves, but really let's just uh, see if we can fill the fridge. This is going to be a genuine. Genuine? Genuine mangrove snapper? I hope. Genuine red. Out of season. Cigar minnow. Let's see if a snapper wants to eat that. Oh yeah, zooming, buddy. With the theme song, lost all your finesse in Japan. Do you ever stop talking shit or? Uh... No. Not to you. <laughs> Nah, that thing said itself. <laughs> I just held the rod. Big old red snapper. Red snapper? What you know about the red snapper? It's another, another red. Red snapper? Can't keep these this time of year. Uh, only three day season, that season's already over, so gotta let them go. I'm real small. Micro red, like the micro red that Chris caught. What was it? Yep, there it is. Dinner, son! Maybe. Another red. It's a mutton. Yeah, it's a poor man's mutton. So long. 
Whoa, look at that thing. That's what we're here for, Chris. I don't produce much, but when I do, I produce. Dude, you produced a cobia, you got a stud yeah. mangrove. Dang, it's up now. Woo. Oh, circle hook low. Easy, don't bend it. Woo. That's a sandwich right there, boys. Sandwich? Thanks, dude. This looks something. Feels halfway decent. Might be another red. No, that's a gray. He's good. Yep. Phew. That's what we came for. Delicious mangrove snapper. It's offshore here, fishing some dead baits. You do not want to stick your fingers in there. These guys got some gnarly jaws, gnarly jaw pressure. But these things are delicious. One of my favorite snappers to eat. What's your favorite fish to eat? Mangrove snapper. Mangrove snappers, your favorite? What's your second favorite fish? Blue runner. Oh man, really? Yep. That's my grandma's weird. favorite in the Bahamas. Blue runner and rice. What about barracuda? Absolutely not no. happening. No. It's because uh, in the islands there's a lot of cicatera, right? Yeah. This is it. So they like blue runners there and they like trigger fish a lot, right? And grunts. And grunts? I, I mean grunts I'm sure would be great. They're just loved, they're just small. My grandma loves grunts and grits. You got a... Yeah, you get big grunts over there. Can you cook them whole too? I bet you they're really good if you, you cook get, them whole. If you go on a Jupiter ledge, you get mm -hmm. five pound grunts. Mm -hmm. So I've had a fish on for probably like five minutes now. We got another gray colored. Another gray one. Put this flatline sardine back out. Got a little wire in case uh, kingfish wants to eat it. Just let it get out behind the boat. I don't know, it's coming now, dude. Might have just been that one it it might have been in a rock. Oh, baby. Come on now. Found the chum slick. That'll be why the bite turned off. Hopefully, it turned back on now. the laziest mangrove snapper I've ever seen. I'm really surprised we're getting them. Eat. Good work. You are Dinner, what, son. You are what you call good. Yep. This is our, uh, our basic rig for these mangroves. Uh, I got a sliding swivel, which is like a simple 100 pound swivel. Just a little bit of 40 pound mono, you can use whatever. And fishing eight ounces of lead, eight ounce bank, because you're anchored and there's a good, there's a decent amount of current. Then I'm fishing a long leader. So I'm fishing like 12 feet of 40 pound. It's getting a little bit twisted up. Just 12 feet of 40, 40 pound. And then a little circle hook, just like that. Real simple rig, but that longer leader will help with more finicky fish. And I have been getting decent bites. story of my life. Hey man. Solid keeper. Can't That's really, all we can't really call these gray snapper. They're orange snapper. Yeah, these things, I mean, they look gorgeous, dude. Those pliers are behind you still in that bucket. Welcome to the north, Ryan. You're going to get bit by a snapper and I'm not even going to feel bad. Or probably. He wanted that chunked filter. You're that same dude that uh, sticks his hand in tiger shark's mouth. Fact. Chris Lowe and a snapper. A story still better than Twilight. Wow. Oh my god. Drop a snapper. That's a great place for that. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're on fire today, bro. Drop How did it, it drop it? I swear on my life. What do you mean? My bait spinning back there. He didn't have it when I. Mangrove only boat. It's, no, it's a mangrove. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. You, got, you got all the spidey senses are tangling. Nice. No. <laughs> oh my God! Look at that man go. Good. Just been here. I've done it. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> e. 
Looks like a one pounder in those man hands. Yeah, I know. On the flat line. A little single hook method. Just let them swim on top back there. I like Maybe that catch one. a kingfish. I'll let that one go far. Yeah. Gimmicks work well. Oh! Oh, dolphin. Oh, dolphin. dolphin. Good one or what? Yeah, dude. Super. Yeah. So we had this pitch bait out. I've been throwing chum all day. All freaking day. And uh, Mahi came up and ate it. See if there's any more with him. Not a bad one. Nice Not a bad one at all. Hope there's more than one. Yeah, I don't see any followers. Nice. Solid gaffer. I was trying to. Not a bad haul at all. Mangrove snapper, mahi, cobia. Yeah. Solid. Blue runners, too. Blue runners. Chris said his favorite fish. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the kitchen. Got that mahi mahi that we just caught offshore, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to clean it up, and then we're going to cook it up. First line that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel with my finger right here. I'm gonna feel where it's soft. So I feel the meat goes all the way up to about here. Then I'll take a line and start there and go all the way back down to his anal fin. Just kind of skipping the rib cage, skipping the belly because Mahi kind of got nasty freaking bellies. So I'll just start right here and just work my way back to that anal fin. Then I'll just start that cut down the top of the Mahi. Just like that. And I like to outline the whole mahi. I'll just go through the mahi real quick. So I have plenty of skin to grab later. And outline the rest of the fish right back to that initial cut. Now I'll separate all of the meat from the fish, starting at the top, following the backbone of it. Here. Come over the top of the backbone here and angle my knife down and I'll start to separate everything. I'm actually, now that I got most of the filet done, I'm gonna leave this on and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Just cause it makes it a lot easier when the fish lays evenly. So exact same thing. Work down on top of the fish. Only just getting in there just a little bit just to start my cut. Once you get to the point where you're hitting the, the main part of the rib cage and the pin bones, just grab the fish by the tail and just work your way towards the head. You gotta kind of pull and press at the same time, but that's gonna break all those pin bones and allow the filet to come right off. Just like that. Exact same thing, like I said, left this filet attached so I can just grab it and break it off. Hmm. We got both our mahi fillets. Now, a lot of guys like to kind of outline a mahi and then grab the skin with a pair of pliers and rip it off. What that does is it kind of leaves like a funky membrane on the meat that you end up cutting later. So I tend to just, just skin them just like a snapper or anything else like that. So get it kind of close to the edge. I'm gonna leave just a hair of meat on the skin because these guys do have thin skin and just follow the line of the fish. Pressing down slightly, attempting to keep my knife pretty flat. There we go. So yeah, just left a fine layer of meat and I'm still gonna kind of cut that bloodline out just because it gives a little bit more of a fishy kind of real strong taste to it and it's not what I want in today's recipe. You also guys, if you look right here, this is where we gaff the fish. So a lot of time you kind of want to cut that out because once you gaff the fish, a bunch of blood will rush to that area. It'll, that'll have a similar taste to kind of like the bloodline. So I'll cut that out as well.
First off, cheers to you guys because we're going hard at this YouTube thing and you guys are coming along for the journey. Let's get into it. Got my fish kind of finely cut up. Just ready, we're gonna be making some mahi tacos later. And I'm just gonna pat these guys down before I season them because fish will always be extruding a little bit more liquid and allow the fish to fry a little bit better. So I just got it on a paper towel like that. And we're just gonna go along with our seasoning. Some garlic powder, chili powder, some cumin. Oh, RIP, brand new. Technical difficulties, you know what I'm saying? Got him. It's nice though, you know, it's nice to have a nice fresh spice when you're seasoning your fish, you know? All right, a little bit of cumin. And I really like the, the the chili powder working with the cumin together. Just kind of, kind of, when I'm thinking tacos, I'm thinking just a little bit spicy, you know? Has that kind of stronger flavor. And then I'll show you guys what we're gonna top it with, which will balance it out nicely. I'll just add a little bit of paprika. If I had smoked paprika, I'd prefer that, but this is what we got. And then I'll just pat that all on there. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. We got some hot olive oil in the pan and we're just gonna pan fry these guys. Not super crazy, but will taste delicious. Lay them lightly in the pan, lightly press down, and just add them in slowly. Some of these pieces will be fine for the taco itself. Some of them will just break up later and make it fit into the taco, but just try not to overcrowd the pan. I'll probably have to do about two or three batches. Just move the oil around lightly, let them all get evenly coated. And these won't take long, maybe a total of, these small pieces, about three minutes in total. Batch number two, pan's still pretty hot. Got, got enough oil left. Um, probably take about three batches. And I'll just take the fish that's already cooked and I'll just put it in the oven. Um, oven's at like 170, it's real, real low. I'm gonna use that to keep our fish warm as well as our tortillas once we cook them because everything's gonna take a couple batches to do. So we're gonna top our tacos with a little bit of homemade slaw. I took the liberty of chopping up some red cabbage, a little bit of green cabbage, some carrots, cilantro, as well as some green onion and just mix that all together earlier off camera. Now I'm gonna add the juice of three limes. Slowly add that in there. And then for a little bit of fat content, I'm just gonna eyeball some full fat Greek yogurt and add that in there as well. I think you could use a bunch of different stuff for this, but Greek yogurt's what we got, so I'm just gonna kind of slowly mix that in there until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. And I'll just keep this guy in the fridge while I fry up the tortilla chips. So I dried out some tortillas, some corn tortillas in the oven earlier, and I just chopped them up into, you know, chip shape. Nothing too crazy. And I got some hot oil and a cast iron, and I'm just gonna add them pretty quickly actually, because these things take maybe 10, 15 seconds per side. And they cook pretty darn quick. And I'm just trying to get them so they're a little bit crispy, but not burned. So that honestly should be about enough. Yep, get them to kind of like a golden brown look. I'm gonna make a bunch of batches of these. Again, got the oven on like 170. So I'm gonna put these in the oven as they, you know, as they come out and I'm gonna make a bunch of batches and salt them to taste. Keep our chips hot in the oven, and we're gonna do some crunchy tortillas as well as some soft tortillas. So again, just got a corn tortilla, and I'm gonna put it in the same oil I was just cooking the uh, chips in. Shouldn't take very long at all. Pat her down. About 10, 15 seconds or so. And when I flip, that's when I'll do my fold. Flip over. Probably could have used a little bit more. This oil's been changing very drastically, changing its temperatures. And I'll do probably half a dozen like this and a half a dozen soft, so we can have, you know, a nice, uh, nice mixture of everything. 
Furrow soft shells, exact same tortilla. This is the pan that I cooked the fish in, just wiped out some of the oil with the paper towel. Soft shell down in the pan. And this is just kind of getting heated up and just enough so it's gonna be charred on the outside and just kind of bring out some of the flavor of the corn tortilla itself. Had to turn the heat up just a bit and that's the kind of char that I'm looking for for the soft ones. And I'll just do half a dozen like that. So we got our freshly fried tortillas. I'm gonna add a little bit of avocado. And we'll add a nice piece of mahi. And then some slaw. And lastly, add just a touch of jalapenos because I like it just a little bit spicy. So we got our mahi tacos with our freshly fried tortilla chips. I think it looks great. Let's dig in. All right, boys, what do we think of the meal? <clears throat> the meal was very delicious. I think what really tied it together was the homemade tortilla chips you made. Yeah, those are, I just crushed those. Yeah, I know they're gone. I wanted a couple more, but. Mm, it's rough. So, uh, the dolphin was very good. Um, everything went awesome together. Thank you. The meal was awesome. <laughs> uh, some of the best fish tacos that I've had in a long time. Everything was super fresh. Ryan really went out of his way on this one, spent some time, it was delicious, thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely, you boys are welcome. Again guys, I appreciate you all so much. It's I've been putting a lot of work into the videos lately and I'm gonna continue doing that. And I'll see you in that next video. Later. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing?